Hey, thanks for joining me again on another leg of this journey that we're on to get this old Jeep running. So what I'm on today is one of those projects where in the back of my mind, my little supervisory voice is saying, Don, you better take your time, think this through, and don't F this one up because what we're talking about today is getting our fuel system, our fuel supply system to the fuel injection all up and running. And what that means is we're going to mount this high pressure fuel pump, electric fuel pump, to the components that I kind of fabricated the other day to get my mounting down to the side of my fuel tank bracket. Now the reason for that, just a quick reminder, is because what the rule book says, or the instruction manual, for both the fuel inj injection system and this pump, is that this pump is supposed to be located as close to the bottom of the tank as possible and no more than three feet from the pickup line. So the only place I had where I could figure out to meet those two requirements is back on the side of the tank. So I fabbed up all these components and this plate in particular is the one that's going to house everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this out. I'm going to think it through. I'm going to take my time and I'm going to get my fuel system built up today. So come on along. Let's see if that works. All right, so what we've got laid out here is our FitTech fuel injection system. So this is the instruction manual that came with the thing. Kind of shows us basically what we're trying to accomplish. This is a rubber mounting backing plate, you know, shock absorber, vibration absorber for the clamp that holds the actual fuel pump. So this fuel pump goes in here like that and gets tightened down. Um, and then in, there's a whole slew of fittings, and I think I mentioned that I have a 10 micron filter and a 100 micron filter that my boy at uh, Summit Racing said I'd need, and a bunch of hose clamps, a ton of different fittings. Not sure we're going to need all these fittings, like here's one to do a hard 90. Um, but in the package, there is a one particular fitting that's a little bit bigger with kind of a metal washer around it. And it obviously goes into this end of our fuel pump. And similarly, we've got a smaller one with a metal washer that goes into the output side. So um, just to clarify, this will be input, output, the flow is this direction. So we're going to take our 10 micron filter and this will be the other part that gets mounted to our plate somewhere essentially here with the flow again going this way to the front so we've got a bracket to mount that guy up like that so what we're going to do now is we'll figure out fittings for either side of this my guess it will just be two of these little dudes and a little piece of hose in between. I'll get my length measured out, figure out how far we're gonna fit on our plate. I just put a fresh coat of paint on my plate so it's over there drying right now, but we're gonna bring it over and lay it down here. Get everything all laid out, measured out, make sure everything looks fine. And then off we go, putting this thing together. So there's the components, and um, I think it's a pretty good start. The instruction manual is not bad. Um, the first kind of this much of this thing is talking about taking your existing stuff off and but they also did stress that your tank line should be of the proper size uh, 3 8 I think yeah 3 8 so they're basically saying if you don't have a 3 8 inch fuel line you're gonna starve the thing a little bit and so I'm gonna measure that and see if I do have a 3 8 inch feed line out of the tank and uh, they're saying if you don't then you should be able to find one so I don't know, we'll have to see about that. So here we go, see what happens. Okay, well I've got my fittings kind of hand tightened in here. Nothing's tightened up tight yet. Uh, I've used up all four of those straight nipples and um, they're all the same size and so forth. So now in kind of keeping with the stern warning and the instructions there about making sure that my input line was big enough, what I did is I pulled the sending unit and input line out of the gas tank. So this is the 21 gallon tank 
with its extended pickup tube. This is the return line, which they said you want to make sure isn't splashing straight down where your pickup line is. So I think that'll probably be alrighty. So here's what I've done. I have taken my micrometer and I've checked the inside of this fitting here. Nine thirty seconds of an inch it is. When I get to my tube that goes into the tank, I'm getting 15 64ths or about 7 30 seconds. So I'm 1 32nd of an inch smaller than these fittings right here with this pickup line. And um, I can't imagine that's going to be enough to starve the thing out. So we're going to proceed, assuming it all is well, and tear into this thing. So if, because the only thing I could figure would be I'd have to get a replacement for this thing or do something different there. And um, again, it's a 32nd of an inch in diameter. I can't imagine that's going to make much difference to the fuel supply to this thing. So we'll see if I come back and regret this later, then you'll be the first to know. But for now, we're going to move forward. Okay, so one other thing that I noticed if you're following along at home here. So if we take this pump, we put our bracket around there it's way bigger than the pump there's no way that's going to tighten down enough with that little screw there to grip the thing so my expectation is is that this is supposed to go inside of here and put a better put a rubber grip around our pump um, i've kind of manually stuck it in here and gone around and it looks to me like this is just meant to be trimmed a little bit because kind of they're overlapping. So I think what I'll do is I'll line this edge up right here with my end of my gap and then I'll mark the other side and snip it off. And then I think we'll fit around there quite nicely and that will hold that in place and not let it vibrate. Right, well, there's a lot of black in this area, so hopefully it'll be all easy enough to see. So this is our 10 micron filter, and I don't know if you can tell, but the flow direction on this is this way. So this will be the supply line out of the gas tank, coming this way, turn around, go in through the back of our fuel pump, out through the front. We'll then turn the corner, go up here to our tank, or to our frame and down to the engine and then this this one in here will be the one that gets our supply line out of the tank so there we go um, I think that'll be all right all right well I thought I'd give you a little quick look here before I go start to fit this back under the Jeep so um, again here's my input filter and I just got a loop there I think it'll be okay it's not going to rub against any of the bolts or anything like that I got a couple of clamps along here so this is my supply line and I've just got all my excess line all coiled up in there because I'll have to take that up to the input chunk when I get my tank back in there 
So I'm gonna go work on repositioning this whole thing back under the Jeep and see how it looks and get these this tube cut to length. And then you'll notice I did put two clamps there, so I'm leaving room to run my supply line or my output line through one of these. And I may put another one here if I've gotten out of one of those. These are five eighths inch hose bracket things or whatever. So anyway, it's ready to go back in. So let's see if we can get that done. All right, well, here we are. The tank is back in. Now I'm still missing a couple of pieces. Like I had a clamp here to clamp my input line down. I haven't hooked up my return line yet, but I do have both of my lines hooked up to the pump over here. And as I kind of expected, my little shield here is gonna need to bend all the way back, but I think that'll be fine. I got plenty of room between those curves there. And, um, then this line is the big coil now, which will get routed along the frame up to the front. So that didn't go too badly. I have not got all my bolts in, everything's not tightened down just yet, but it's in place and uh, it went in quite easily, really. So I've got, you know, my ground strap goes here and my sending unit wire goes there in the center. So I haven't got the wires hooked back up and I still need to get my, these two fittings back here are for the overflow and the vent or the, the vapor recovery system part of the smog control thing. I think we may forego that. Don't tell the EPA because we're almost done driving gas cars. Anyway, I wonder how if I'm gonna get this thing running before we all have to start driving electric cars. I don't know, we'll see. So anyway, um, Still, like I said, I do not have my electrical hooked up down there, but I'm gonna leave this here for now because it's getting pretty late at night. And I think about time to tie a knot in it for now. Well, there we have it. Another evening's work wrapped up. Um, the only thing I ran out of was those 5 8 inch insulated hose clamps. I'm gonna need a fair chunk of those. And I am gonna need some more wire loom and some wire to run my wires up there. But once I get the wires and the fuel line relatively close to the front here, then it'll be time for the tub to sit back down on there and make sure everything lines up well. I did get my hard brake lines in place there. Uh, again, I think I could use one more little hose clamp there. I clamped off my return line and hooked it back up. Although, the weird thing is, is when I'm looking through the instructions, on the fuel injection system, it looks like the return line is supposed to come from the fuel pressure regulator. My fuel pressure regulator does not have a return line. So I may have a conversation with the boys there. See what the story is with that. Where does all the excess fuel go when you're not using it? Does it just stay in the system and stay pressurized? That doesn't seem that great, but anyway. That's the only complication so far, other than that, everything ran right along and um, it's time to wrap it up for the night and put this thing away. So that's what I'm gonna do. Tomorrow's a Monday, we gotta get back to work. Keep paying for all this nonsense, but um, she, yeah, she's pretty close to getting the tub back on.